Hello, welcome to this workshop titled Getting Started. This is the first one of the sequence. And uh, I'm going to start showing in here is the file folder, workshop one, getting started. We're going to work off of explicit example one. And here is a PDF file. And let me drag it back onto the screen. I have dual monitors, so it goes off. And this provides the background for this tutorial. And this is off the LSTC website. And it's quite useful for getting started because it introduces your unit system and then it goes through and explains exactly what is going on. So it's a nice walkthrough. It's necessary to read um, and that's part of this workshop is go through and read this. There's also under it's there's three little examples. The explicit example one, they give you the file. This is the, the keyword file and it's denoted with a K on a subscript. And it's a text file. And it is the simplest. It's, it has all the necessary commands to run, keyword, control termination, and these can all be found in the keyword manual. And I don't feel it's necessary to actually hand enter them, but it's worthwhile to see the file construction. And this is based by on characters here. And you can also make them common separated. I'm going to close that. This is the utility of doing these. These, this type of AVI, so you can see all the commands that I'm using. What I want to do is I want to open up LS Prepost and opens, and I'm going to make it full screen. File, open, LS Dynamic Keyword File, and you can see it's on a, another workshop. I'll go to Workshop One, Example One. Pick this one right there. There's our block. That's about as simple as you can get. And this is a little introduction to the LS Prepulse. I'm going to do a little introduction in each workshop. And it's it's hard if you basically there's no simple way to learn LS Prepulse, uh, you know, sequence of it's just it takes a little time. You just go through the manual. For example, this is the key. Go from here to here. And this brings up all your keywords that are within the deck. And you can see you have control termination. It says it's going to end in one. And it has the database of how much output it's going to generate. It says it's going to generate an output at, at a tenth of whatever time units we're working with. Uh, and then, of course, you have your curve. Everything that was in that PDF is there. Okay. I'm just going to go ahead and close this because we need to run it. The file is already to run right there. I'm going to open up LS Manager, LS Dyna Manager, and select LS Dyna Solver. I was running before this. Yeah, let me I'll show you. I was running some implicit work and show current solver name, and it shows double precision on the solver. We're doing explicit work and we just need to use single precision. It's quite a bit faster. Uh, I think it's like 40% faster. So, oh, ah, sorry. This one thinks, uh, okay, select LS Dyna Solver. I want to use a single precision, 64 bit. Now solve back to solver, start, browse. Let's go find that. Every, everybody's computer will be different. You see how I have things organized on my computer. LS Dyna class, workshops, getting started, <laughs> example, boom, there's our file. I'll hit run. And it successfully analyzed. And this is, it gives you a little log file, comes out, says what's going on, uh, gives you some of the sense switches. And we're going to be talking about all this. I don't want to overload. This is just the first little introduction. Termination, time reached, and uh, here we go. Normal termination. Everything looks fine. And so now let's go look at the results because that's part of the example. Is it we go file, open, LS Dyna binary because this results. And it remembers explicit example right into there. And an example, it just shows a chart of the Y displacement as a function of time on the graphing. And unless you had this little tutorial, you might go, oh, that's where do we get that? Well, those are history var variables right there. They give a little graph. You start, oh, I want to make a graph of some variable. And I want to make it on a nodal. 
and I want to plot the Z displacement. They make it pretty easy. And it's a flat load on the top, so we could pick any one of these nodes here. I mean, we could pick one, or we could pick two, or we could pick three. You see how they, they highlight there? And I'm just doing this for sort of fun, saying you can pick the four nodes and we could plot them. And you can see, of course, it all comes up like that. Now, if we only want to do one, so we'd go over to this little thing here and say clear. Not say clear, we hit clear. Just give one. And see, it tells you right there. You can see that? Set nodes to one. Good. Plot. And that's it. And that ties perfectly up to the little examples shown. And that's all we, this is just your basic getting started and showing. And they also, they give some other examples. There's an, uh, you know, implicit, and there's a thermal, and there's a couple thermal, and they're all good to do. Um, this is all for this example here. Thanks a lot.